But I'm a Jersey girl. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Jersey girl in the house. Don't get it set. I'm out. In the farmer's market. Guess who's here with me today? Oh, yeah. It's that yeah. chocolate dude. <laughs> you get it in the farmer's market today. Holler at the girl. Get it set. Welcome back, this is Organic Chef. So today we're doing a quick treat for the holidays. We're gonna be making a no-bake sweet potato cheesecake. That's right, we're gonna do a no-bake sweet potato cheesecake. This is how your girl's moving, this is what we're working with. So I always try to think outside of the box to do something new. So I've always, I've done pumpkin cheesecake, sweet potato cheesecake, but I haven't attempted to do a no-bake version. So I thought it would be fun and to do something different this year um, for the holidays, and I'm so excited. Um, I do have my mom coming into town, so I'm making this for her. She loves cheesecake, um, and her birthday um, is right around Thanksgiving, so um, I definitely wanted to share this with her um, and to welcome her, you know, uh, to do a joke. Let's get it popping. Let's get no bacon. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you. Cause usually I be like, let's get cooking. So um, this recipe is a healthy recipe. Um, we're gonna be doing some different things today um, that you don't normally see. So we're gonna be using my clay pot um, instead of the normal traditional way of making um, your sweet potatoes, whether you're roasting them, baking them, or boiling them, or steaming them. Um, I'm using a, a clay pot today because clay pots keep the nutrients um, of whatever you're cooking inside because it is a porous vessel. Um, and it's a better quality because it doesn't have any uh, lead or anything like that um, that seeps out into your food when you're cooking, depending on your cookware and things that you're using. Um, this is what Organic Chef does. I try to bring awareness to what's in your food, what are you cooking it with, what are you baking it with, what are you frying it with, how, how are you getting down in the kitchen as far as utensils and tools that you're using in the kitchen. Are they not toxic? Can't hear you. Um, do they have a coating on them that could be, you know, seeping out into your food when you're cooking with them as you heat, heat that vessel up? So we're doing it a little different um, because we want to keep all those nutrients um, that are available in a sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are good for a variety of things for the human body. Um, it's also beneficial for your gut. It helps to have a good gut. Good gut means good immune system. Um, it's plentiful in vitamin A, and we all need vitamin A. Um, and we'll go through some things as we go through our, our process today in making a no-bake cheesecake. But just to give you a preliminary of what we're going to be covering today for this great, delicious, mm, good no-bake cheesecake. So stay tuned. We'll be back right back. And we're going over the ingredients and what we're going to be using today in our no-bake sweet potato cheesecake. Holler at your girl. This is how we doing it. Okay, so there's a few things that you need to know. So I have my clay pot here. Um, I purchased this at like a Ross or something like that. I've had it for a few years now. Um, uh, but this is basically it. This is a, a ceramic glazed 
uh, clay pots you see the clay at the bottom here um, and you can't put this into the oven um, just as is you have to soak the part that is still clay that hasn't been glazed for about 20 minutes underwater so I've done that already so my hands all wet um, and then you have to start out your clay pot in a cold oven not hot it'll it'll create cracks um, so that's just some some tips some things that I've learned and I'm sharing with you um, but by all means this is a great vessel to cook in because it keeps all your nutrients and we need all your nutrients when you boil um, you lose about half of the nutrients um, and then when you bake them you lose about three-quarters of the nutrients um, in your sweet potato um, so that basically means like by the time you sit down and eat at the dinner table there's no nutrient value to your to your dish or to your side um, depending on how you're making it so this will ensure that you'll get all the nutrients in your sweet potatoes that's right or any vegetable or any protein that you cook with in a clay pot you will keep all the nutrients so like I said this is a customary bean pot so you would let your beans soak um, in your bean pot in your oven uh, to soften them up so just to show you my pretty clay pot and that's what, what we will be using today so that is the process that we're gonna go through. So right now, we're gonna go through some of the ingredients um, that we're using today. This is all basically what we're using today. So I have some fresh ginger, which we are gonna grade. I have a half of a lemon. I have, next to that, I have extra vanilla extract, nutmeg, maple syrup, cinnamon, hazelnut flour, a almond flavored, the uh, almond eggnog that we're using for our milk base, and flax seeds. Flax seeds we're gonna use. Flax seeds we will use as a egg replacer. Um, and yes, this is vegan. I also have some plant-based or vegan cream cheese and vegan butter um, earth balance and of course the guest star a sweet potato so we're gonna start by cutting our sweet potato so I'm gonna get my serrated knife you want something that's gonna be extra extra sharp I'm using my serrated knife um, so it doesn't dull my blade. So as you can see, I'm keeping the skin on because there's a lot of nutrient value in the skin. See the nice bright orange color? This is that beta carotene. This is that antioxidants that are good for our bodies and it helps to fight back against cancer cells. Um, so that bright red, bright orange as you see, this is what's popping. So I'm just going to chop. Chop them in half so I have a nice flat surface to continue cutting on. Voila, nice, yummy, yummy. So when you think about sweet potato, it's, it's, it's all the rage for sweet potato fries. This time of year, we've got the holidays are here. So we're thinking about some casseroles, pies, cookies, cakes, all that nice stuff. I'm just gonna cut the little edges off. So this is something that I enjoy doing because like I said, I'm keeping the nutrients. I'm getting all my vitamin A. 
uh, one, uh, I believe it's 100 milligrams uh, of sweet potato gives you over 287% of your daily value intake for vitamin A. So that's all you need um, to maintain your vitamin A. I mean, that, that's extra, extra cool, right? So that's it. I'm just breaking them down so I can cut them into a small dice. Flat, see, nice and flat. So unlike most, most recipes, like I said, I am keeping the skin on because that's gonna give me all the nutrients that I need from my sweet potato. Okay, so I have them all flat and they're ready to be diced. So cooking time all evaluates to what the size is for your cooking. So um, the smaller the cuts are, the shorter cooking time you're gonna have. So I'm just gonna give them a nice small dice. Um, and you want them all to be roughly the same size because that will enable you to have even cooking time where some of them will be done sooner, some of them will be done later, depending on the size. That's how you want it. So um, some other fun facts about sweet potato. Sweet potato can also contain magnese. Magnese is good for brain function. I don't know about you, but I know I need help. <laughs> um, it's also good for your bones. So these are some just other healthy benefits about sweet potatoes. And then I mentioned already that this is a vegan variety recipe here. So those of you family members um, who practice that type of lifestyle, this is something that they can enjoy. You know, I, I always found it very hard to go to different places to eat for the holidays um, because my lifestyle is a lot different than most people. Um, so I found in a world of animal-based lifestyle, there really wasn't much for me to eat. So it became, okay, I either have to bring my own food or I have to eat before I leave. So most times I made sure I ate something before I left the house. Um, you know, and in certain places, people were accommodating. Um, you know, they knew the lifestyle that I had, or someone made mention of it, um, and they made sure they had something. Um, so, when you think about that type of lifestyle, it's hard to eat out and to go places because most places are catered to an animal based lifestyle. So, when you think about your cooking, and the vessels that you're using to cook with, such as french fries and things like that, they're making your french fries in the same vat of oil and the same vessel that they did chicken or, or fish, um, if you don't eat fish. So, I began to just stay at home and learn how to make things myself. You know, um, we made pizza at home. We made, you know, my version of pizza and Chinese takeout at home. Um, and we loved it. It's fresh, fresh is best, that's my motto. And you're making it at home. You know, I made it, I made it a thing. 
Like this is what we did on Fridays. We made pizza at home. Whatever my children wanted, you know, it's a joke in my house. And, you know, they're like, oh, come on, mommy. You know, <laughs> whatever they want, I'm like, what do you want? You want it? I can make it. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure for them it was, you know, it's hard for them to understand when they're young. But the best quality food you're going to get is going to be right at home. Done, son. Look at your girl. Look at all my beautiful sweet potatoes. So at this time, I've got my pot, my clay pot that's been sitting in water. And I'm just going to take them and put them in my pot. Don't worry, they're gonna cook. Um, using a, a, play, a clay pot allows your pot to heat evenly and distribute the heat. Um, so you never have to worry about that. So the temperature is gonna come up with the potatoes at the same time. This is just how you cook potatoes, right? You start out potatoes in cold water and then you bring it up to temperature and it cooks on the inside first and then on the outside. This is how you wanna do it. So same process for the clay pot. You are starting it out in a cold oven and it's heating up the process as the oven heats up. The clay pot will heat up and do its job. So I'm just gonna get some water. So we're just gonna fill our pot with water. I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Cause I want it to cover. There you go. And then we have our lid. So I'm giving it a little breathing room. So it has time, it has room to breathe. And lid is on. So right now I'm putting my clay pot into the oven. I'm gonna set it in the center and I'm gonna put it on 400. For 55 minutes. So we'll be back and the next step we will be doing is we are going to make our crust. That's right, we are gonna make our crust for our no bake sweet potato cheesecake. That's a song. No bake sweet potato cheesecake. No bake sweet potato cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bugging. Be right back. Next, we're gonna take our hazelnut flour our four ounces of butter, combine them using our hands, make sure that they're crumbly and start to resemble crumbs. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of coconut flour, combine it together so it's evenly incorporated so it clumps up as you see here. So next, we're going to take our crumbles that are going to be our pie crust and place them in our pie dish pressing it down from the center outward to the edges, making sure that it's even and that it is also flat. So from here on, we will place it in the refrigerator for about two to four hours so it sets. Okay, so it's been about 35 minutes and it's just about done, but I have this aroma of sweet potatoes in my kitchen so that indicates to me that it could be done already ahead of time so let's take a look all right nice so what we're looking for here is we're looking for consistency of how tender it is So 
got my fork here. Okay, I've got one here. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Here go. Mm-hmm. No seasoning, no butter, no sugar, no salt. Mmm. Now, I set my timer and it was done seven minutes early. So this is a clay pot, y'all. At 400, one sweet potato cut up into small dice. And it took 45, less than 45 minutes to do it. Mm-hmm. Quick cooker. It's good. You know? But this gets the job done, the clay pot. So you can see how you can use this. Um, for that type of cooking. Stick with your girl. I ain't gonna steal you wrong. My daughter always laughs at me. You know, I always try to give her quick tips and little bits of advice. And it's a joke that we have. You know, I always tell her, stick with a granite chef. You'll win every time. <laughs> it's the truth. I got your back. So now, I have my strainer here. And I have my bowl. Where did my bowl go? I'm back. So I have my strainer, I have my bowl here. And we're just going to pour our beautiful, beautiful diced sweet potatoes with the skin on, with all the nutrients, into our bowl. So we've got our hot, steamy sweet potatoes. And it's funny that I use steaming because that's the process that clay pots do. It allows it to come to a hot, hot steam, mimicking, mimicking the quick cooker or you know whatever you got going on to do your pressure cooking at home. But I'll even do you one better. The clay pot has been around for centuries. So the quick cooker mimic the clay pot. Mm-hmm. Holler at your girl. Just tell you facts. So let's talk about sweet potatoes, right? So I'm gonna put it in my bowl here. Mm. Mm. And remember, our mixture that we used for the crust is cooling in the refrigerator, just in case you forgot. So I'm just gonna distribute a little bit of the heat just a little bit, because I want all of the heat to stay in here. So when I begin the mashing process, um, it, it enables me to break down those sweet potatoes um, to a nice smooth texture. Moving that clay pot out of my way. So let's talk about the, the next couple ingredients I have here. So I have my mini zester here. And I'm gonna zest some ginger. With the skin on, cause what do we always say? Keep the skin on, that's where all the nutrients are. So I'm just going to zest Cause I just want that pop of ginger flavor. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. There's a timer. Finish ahead of time. You know, so how long would it have taken it you to boil or roast that sweet potato, right? Okay, so I got my ginger in here. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. Then we're gonna add our eggnog mixture. And this has notes of cinnamon and nutmeg in it because it's eggnog, right? Do you see how thick that is? How that's nappe, how it hugs to this glass right here? So it's a nice, it's a nice thick mixture here. And this is all at room temperature, by the way. Um, then we want a nice velvety feel. So we're gonna put about two tablespoons of butter in here. That's it. We don't need any more than that. Then I have some vanilla extract. 
give it that nice flavor. Then we're gonna use that lemon juice. Again, adding a little bit more moisture. It's like a half a squeeze. And then we're gonna get some lemon zest in there. So I want that pop of that nice, bright, bright, bright flavor. Great, so we got our vitamin A, we got vitamin C, we've got ginger with its properties of anti inflammatory, we've got the sweet potatoes that help your gut. Come on, y'all, stay with me, stay with me. So then we're gonna add some cinnamon, and I'll leave this for later. Make that some more or add less. Yummy, yummy nutmeg, put all that in. That's about a, a quarter of a teaspoon. And then we're going to add our maple syrup. This is softened, it's at room temperature. This is my plant-based cream cheese that I was telling you about. So we're just gonna take this it in. That's it. Done with that. Okay. So now I have my masher. Oh my gosh, you can smell the aromas of all the flavors coming together. It smells great. Looks great. And keeping that skin on is gonna add another level of texture to my sweet potato mixture. So can you see why I said just first some of the heat, but not all that heat, because we need that heat to break down these sweet potatoes. has been around for centuries and it originated or was first cultivated in South America um, and in the Americas including here in the United States so no one brought this here it was already here cultivating and fun fact it's actually part of the morning glory vegetables like um, sprouts and spinach. Um, it's really not even a potato. Yeah, did you know that? It's kind of cool, right? Okay, so this is coming to be the consistency that I want it to be at. So now I'm gonna throw in that original rest of the cinnamon. So I want all that flavor in there. So I'm done mashing. It's not going to be completely smooth, but it's going to re remain to be as smooth as it's going to be for the type of dish that I want to make for my sweet potato cheesecake, no bake. Okay. So I want this to tighten up just a little bit. See, it's pretty much it's smooth, but it has some lumps in it. I don't know about you, but I like texture. I don't want it to be so smooth. And remember, the sweet potatoes have been broken down, so it's a nice, smooth texture, even to the bite, um, with the little bits and pieces that are in here. So we gotta do the taste test, right? Mmm, mmm, 
It's amazing. It's amazing. I can taste the ginger. I can taste that bright, bright lemon. I can taste the nutmeg and the cinnamon. And because I was able to maintain all of the nutrients here, I am able to taste the subtle flavors that are natural to the sweet potato by having retained all of those nutrients. Let me tell you, this is really good. Wow, I'm blown away. It tastes fantastic. So it's not overly sweet, it's not overly bearing, it has the right amount of flavor, the right texture, everything that I'm looking for, for my no bake cheesecake. Nailed it. So I have my flax seeds here. Move my knife over to the side. Clean as you go. So I have my flax seeds here and I have about two tablespoons of water. So this is gonna help to bring my mixture together. Now normally you wanna let this set for about 10, 12 minutes. See how it's starting to change? It's starting to expand, that's what you want. I'm helping the process along by using my spatula. So now it's a thicker consistency. But if you don't have time to do this and you're planning everything ahead of time, you can just set this out and it'll come together on its own. So like I said, I'm aerating it, allowing it to do the process a little bit faster. So these are flax seeds. I mean, another healthy component to what I'm using today. So now it has the right consistency of what I'm looking for. And it goes in. Oops. <laughs> so this is going to be like my non-egg combiner. That's going to help to keep my mixture together. That's it. So now the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna fill our pie plate. We're gonna take that out of the refrigerator and we're gonna fill it. Be right back. Okay, so this is your girl, Organic Chef. Fresh to death, just got the hair did. I'm at the farmer's market, so I promise you I'd be back. So let's go. Egg, and I'm ready to go. Me a persimmon, organic. Cleaned up, use it in a recipe that I got. We need two oranges, so let's get an orange. It's good, I like it. Pass the squeeze test is too soft. See, sometimes they freeze them, so it's a hit or miss. I understand trying to keep keep them, but if they're frozen, then they go bad very quickly once they defrost. This one's pretty good. I think I got some lemons and let's see if I got some lime. I do have some lemons. Let's get, same thing, citrus. Gotta squeeze them. So, so I'm gonna get about six lemons. Although these are pretty big, so I think I'm just gonna cut it in half and just get three. What else do I have in my list? Uh, some garlic. 
garlic, leeks, and squash. Let's see if we can find it. I love coming to the farmer's market. I can stay here all day. Ooh, I see some ginger for my fresh puree ginger. Yeah, yeah. Ginger. to get my greens too early to get my berries so even though I see a good price I'm just gonna have to wait um, I do have some peppers at home so I don't need to get that um, I think it's too soon to get my mushrooms as well um, but I think I'm gonna go with the dried the dried portachini mushrooms that's what I'm gonna go with for my recipe this way I can buy it now. I don't have to worry about it for later. Let me get some garlic. My first organic garlic. See how many bulbs I need. I said two, I got three, that's good enough. Um, I also have some head of broccoli. The broccoli looks great here, but it's not gonna make it. So, um, I'm not gonna get the broccoli today. I will get one red apple. I mean, <laughs> red onion. I have some of my uh, lips here. So, orange tech, lemon tech, oh, leeks. I got my ginger. Oh, I need to get some dry mustard. Let's get some dry mustard. Got me my leaves. Okay. So this is really cool. I found some organic acorn squash, which at most of the other stores I haven't found. But I told you, you can always find it in the farmer's market. So my recipe calls for four. This will be a, probably about three right here. Um, serving so I don't really need it and I can cut these in quarters and still stuff them so I think we're gonna go with that they're huge I don't know if I can find a smaller one here I think this will do acorns Ta -da! okay I need some dry mustard and those porcini mushrooms. So I'm looking for salmon just to see what the prices are, um, see what the quality is and if they have wild caught. Um, I don't really see any. Everything I see here is farm raised. So I'm gonna go inside and see what they have. It's on the outside, they have ready-made packages for you that you can pick up. Well, let's check it out. So, I'm headed over. A lot of noise. To see if I can get my dry mustard. Got some brown turmeric. Can't get enough of that, but I have enough of that at home. So I don't need that. Um, smoke wood sea salt. Ooh. I think I want to get me some of that. sauces instead of using the black pepper. I am a black pepper person so I will use it every single time but I like the white pepper gives a, a pink a hotter flavor to me so I'll tend to use that. 
got my ground mustard. And then I'll take this and I'll put it in my spice jar so then I can have it readily available. So what I like about going to this farmer's market is that it's set up internationally. So you'll see different items here internationally about what they carry. Um, so what I like about these brands are that most of the brands that you find that are international, their code for ethics and farming is a lot different here than it is in the United States, um, where they don't allow genetically modified organisms um, to affect their crops and what they grow. So I tend to lean more towards these than towards ones that are grown here in the United States and or that are especially organic. So let's check out some other items. I told you I can get lost in the baking aisle, especially when I see some new products or new items. I'm so excited. Um, so I want to show you something very quickly. So um, this is a, a very good brand that I buy. It's called Rumford and it's non-GMO, but more importantly, um, this brand of Mumford is what they call aluminum free. So you have to be very careful of the metals that we ingest depending on the items that we eat. And I like this brand because they provide um, a non-aluminum brand. Um, of the better quality and it's non-GMO. Um, when I took my test um, at the doctor's last week to test to see where my minerals and my nutrients were, I tested zero for metals. So that means I'm on the right track of eating the right food, making sure that I'm using the proper filtration for my water system at home and I'm eating, I'm, I'm eating well, I'm eating good. So just wanted to share that tip with you really, really quick while I was in the baking aisle. Aluminum free Rumford baking powder. That's the brand that I stick by. That's right, it's Friday. Your girl got her feet out. I'm in Georgia. Holler at your girl. Don't be jelly, y'all. Okay, so let's see what I got popping with my list. I guess I should remove the shade. That would help out, right? Gotta be stunning in a Costco. <laughs> okay. Now you can see my face. Okay. So it's pretty busy here. Um, I got here just um, just before noon. I'm gonna go see if they have my salmon. So, like I said, I usually get my salmon from the farmer's market, but they didn't have the wild caught there. So, I'm just gonna check and see if they have it here. By the by, I got a food and safety email today telling me about the ban on non-GMO in the US, which is a very, 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 very big win. So, kudos to the people who fight for an organic, non-GMO lifestyle. Good people out there fighting a good fight. So, got some farm raised. Don't want that. I want some good old fashioned, non-farm raised salmon. I think we're out of luck here. Let's see. Uh, good looking tuna. Great looking lobster. Let's see what we got.
We've got some wild sockeye salmon. These are like the, uh, well, it's all right. Not bad, it's uh, 125 a pound, so it's a pretty good price. Get a nice, nice piece of salmon here. Right. Nice salmon. Yay! All right, let's see what else I need to get on my list. These are like the salmon from Alaska. Okay, this will do. Pie crust is done. And it is firm to the touch, just like I told you it would be. So now, we're going to put our mixture in the pie dish. Here we go. See it? It looks so pretty. The, the skin that has been nicely steamed, so it's a nice orange color. It's beautiful. So, I enjoy holidays because it kind of brings everybody together. You get a moment to breathe from your normal hustle and bustle of life and whatever you do with our families, our jobs, our careers. Um, and you get to spend a little time with family. So I certainly, certainly enjoy the holidays of that, that aspect. Um, I'm all for giving thanks. I'm all for acknowledgement because I think we all have to have a humble spirit, um, you know, and being thankful for where we are and what we have and what we've been given. American in the United States is not an easy feat um, for us. So, but I'm proud. I'm proud of my ancestors. I'm proud of what we stand for. I'm proud of what we fight for. Um, and doing things that are right and that are just. And I'm proud for the people who support those efforts, no matter what color you are. Um, so for that, I'm giving thanks for that. So this is gonna go in the refrigerator. Remember, this is a sweet potato cheesecake. So this is gonna go in the fridge and it's gonna cool for two to four hours. So gotta wait. <laughs> I'll be back. So, our sweet potato cheesecake is done. So we're gonna cut it. So I have, I have a cutter here, pie cutter. So uh, we're just gonna cut it. And I have some lovely walnuts to put on top. By all means, whatever nuts float your fancy. You can use pecans, peanuts, almonds, whatever you want. I chose walnuts because I, I like them, you know, in a lot of the dishes or salads that I use for this time of year. So let's see how we're doing. Ooh, I like that, I like that. Breaking it, holler at your girl. Oh wow. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Whoo! I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so let's take. I'm gonna put this in my dish. Oh my goodness, this looks fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna take my walnuts and we're gonna sprinkle them on top. 
Now last week I did a red wine sauce. Um, and this is my recipe test for the holiday. So I'm getting myself together and getting it ready. So I wanna, I wanna taste it. So I wanna show you the crust so you can see it. Flavor is on point. Who thought and who knew that something so nutritious and cooked very healthy would taste great and be good for you? See how we're doing it. Mmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There you have it. My robust, authentic, nutrition, no bake, sweet potato cheesecake. This is it, there you have it. So our prep time was about 20 minutes. That's between the cutting and making our crust and then making our filling. And then our bake time was just under 45 minutes. Give or take 10 minutes, like 35, 30. 35 minutes it took um, so you got 35 minutes of cook time and then you have 20 minutes of prep time so that's under an hour you can get this stuff done and by all means the crust you can make that ahead of time you can also freeze it absolutely um, and remember our key points to what we were doing today is using a clay pot helping to infuse and, and to keep all our nutrients because it is porous making sure that you use a pot that have, does not have a, a, lead, a lead glaze based. But nowadays you'll find that most of the companies, they're not making it with um, harsh metals and harsh chemicals. Um, I use an aluminum pan uh, to make my pie crust in. One, I, it was easy for me to put in the refrigerator and to stay cold for it to harden up because that surface is easier for it to stay cold. Um, two, you know, don't worry about my aluminum. As long as aluminum is not being heated up, it's not made with harsh chemicals, it's not going to be infusing anything into the food at all um, when kept cold. Um, you know, when you're using aluminum and aluminum foils and things like that, it releases chemicals into your food. So you have to be very mindful when you're barbecuing, when you're grilling, uh, when you're roasting a potato in the oven and you're putting foils on it, be very mindful about using the aluminum and the chemicals that it can infuse into your food that are no good for you. So being mindful of the utensils that you use to cook with um, are, is, is very important to do the research into how those items are being made and produced and or manufactured. Vitamin A, beta carotene, antioxidants. This is a, a this sweet potato was cultivated in South America and it is not a potato. It's of the morning glory family. So this is Organic Chef gave me quick tips and healthy facts about eating healthy. From my humble organic kitchen to yours, I'm wishing you health of healthiness. Can I say it right? I'm wishing you wealth of healthiness. And uh, may you all be safe for the holidays with your friends and your family. Until then, I'm out. Have a great day, everybody.